We're going to talk a little bit about one-way analysis of variance, the hypothesis test. Analysis of variance is often abbreviated ANOVA. One-way analysis of variance is the hypothesis test that we're going to talk about here. This involves having one x variable or one factor, hence the name one-way analysis of variance. Analysis of variance in general is a concept that flows through many different statistical methods. So if you sit back and think about it, in some sense, analysis of variance or analyzing variability is, in some sense, it could be another name for statistics. And that's what this discipline is all about. So this particular test, one-way analysis of variance, is for analyzing relationship between one x variable that's categorical with two or more independent levels or independent groups and their effect on some y variable that's numeric, okay, some numeric outcome. So we're going to work with this simple data here. We can see we have 60 individuals who are randomly assigned to one of four diets. We're, lo we're calling them diets A, B, C, or D. And they have their weight loss measured after six weeks of being on the diet. So we can see 15 people have been assigned to diet A, 15 to B, 15 to C, and 15 to D. And we can see all the observations for group A here. They have a sample mean of 9.18 pounds lost on average and a sample standard deviation of 2.29. Again, on average, an individual within diet A moved about 2.29 pounds from the mean of 9.18. So we're going to work with simple data again to be able to focus on the concepts and not get overwhelmed with an extremely large data set. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to test do any of these diets have an effect on weight loss? Um, to try and get at that question, we can think about comparing the mean weight loss for each of the four groups or comparing the median weight loss for all the four groups. We're going to stick to comparing means and mention that if we want to compare medians, we can use non-parametric approaches or other approaches, um, bootstrapping or resampling approaches being, being one of those. So to try and get at this question, we're going to start with a null hypothesis that all of the means, the mean weight loss in all these four groups are the same. Or expressing it in notation, the mean weight loss for someone on diet A is the same as the mean weight loss for diet B, the same for C, and the same for D. And an alternative hypothesis that at least one differs. And again, sometimes this is written, the mean for group P is not equal to the mean for group Q. For some, P not equal to Q. Okay, and again, this is just a notation-y way of saying at least one of the diets is different than the others in terms of mean weight loss. So a reminder, we start by assuming our null hypothesis to be true. Right. Um, most hypothesis tests work this way. Right. And again, that's because if the null is true, we know what we expect to show up in data. If at the population level, the mean weight loss is the same for all these diets, we expect the sample means for all these four groups to be approximately the same. Right. And then we can test how likely we were to see the differences we saw, or even larger, if we'd expect them to be all the same. Right. So hypothesis tests always have the same underlying approach. I like to think of ANOVA as sort of being a screening test. If we end up rejecting our null and saying we have evidence to believe the alternative is true, that just tells us at least one diet is different from the others. Okay, or at least one mean is different from the rest. It doesn't tell us if more than one differ or which ones differ. And at that point, we'll go in and we'll start to try and decide which diets differ from each other, okay, or which groups differ from each other. So we'll build our way up to that. So before getting into the mechanics of the test, Let's just spend a moment talking about um, the assumptions of this. Right? So again, this is another parametric approach or sometimes called large sample approaches. And it has the same general set of assumptions. To work with one-way analysis of variance, we're going to assume we have a simple random sample. We have independent observations. So person one, person two, person three, they're all independent of each other. We're going to assume that we also have independent groups. So in this example, people on diet A are independent of the people on diet B. We have the 
equal standard deviations assumption. So we assume that the standard deviation of each group is roughly the same. Again, at the population level, the variability in weight loss under these four diets is approximately the same. And then finally, the large sample assumption. We assume that each group has a large sample size, bigger than 20 as the guide, right? We've noted before that the more skewed each group is, the larger the sample size should be. So 20 is just a, a rough guide. Or groups are approximately normal. So the distribution of weight loss in each of these four groups is approximately normal or symmetrically distributed around its mean. As we've hit on in other videos, what if these assumptions aren't met? Right? What if we have a small sample size? If we have non-normality or what if we want to test about median rather than means? Then we can use either non-parametric approaches. So we can use a non-parametric approach. And the one in this case would be the Kruskal-Wallis. We can use Kruskal-Wallis one-way analysis of variance. So this is the non-parametric alternative to one-way analysis of variance. Works pretty similar to the test we've, the non-parametric test we've seen so far. Rather than using actual values, it ranks them and then it compares the ranks in some way. Or we could also consider using some form of bootstrap or a resample type approach. And we've touched on these to some extent and laid um, foundation for, for these to some extent. So we can think of the analysis, one way analysis of variance, as being an extension of the independent two sample t test has all the same set of assumptions. Um, it's just for testing the, comparing the means of two or more independent groups. Okay, in the case that we compare two independent groups, it becomes completely identical to the two sample t test. And again, as we've noted through, uh, throughout these videos, as we've continued to talk about things, um, we want to make sure that people in these four different groups, um, since they're independent, that they're similar in some way, right? So we can randomize who gets um, each of the for diets, but we might want to make sure other factors are balanced. So we might want to make sure that we don't have a larger number of males or females in certain groups or you know, a certain number of heavier or lighter people or people who are more active or less active. So randomizing we hope should balance these, but we can do things like match. Right? For someone in group A, we can find a match in group B, C, or D. We can do things like um, in statistics, what gets called blocking, or sometimes it gets called stratified assignment. So we can say, take all the heavier males and randomly assign equal numbers to group A, B, C, D. Then all the lighter males randomly assign equal numbers to A, B, C, D, and so on. So trying to balance these important factors. We can do adjustment via multiple um, regression methods, and we'll build up to this as we progress through these. You could think about doing things like Rather than looking at the weight loss, look at percentage of weight loss or other factors to control for. Right now we're in the earlier stages of we just want to build up what is one-way analysis of variance as a concept, as a test, what's it's based on, and we'll slowly add more and more to it as we progress through things. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. Share our videos. Stick around guys, because we got lots more.